you think is the most uh, plausible next step? Would Saudi Arabia be willing to be part of an Arab force that goes in to replace the Israelis and stabilize Gaza? Yeah. I think what we need to focus on is a solution for the Palestinian uh, issue, not just for Gaza. I think all of the Arab states have indicated that they are willing to talk about a, re a resolution or a solution that includes how we manage the situation in Gaza, as long as it's part of a bigger picture. You know, uh, and what we feel is necessary is some form of credible, irreversible path to a Palestinian state. That will give legitimacy to any uh, Arab country and you know, us as a collective group addressing the issue uh, uh, holistically, including, of course, Gaza and the governance of Gaza. So you're not ruling out the possibility of Saudi troops going Saudi into... troops, I think that's something uh, you know, hypothetical. It's hard to address, and Arab troops even. Is, is, I don't think what type of force on the ground is the issue. It's because if we offer real hope to the Palestinians, I think it will be very much within the capacity of the Palestinian uh, people, the Palestinian Authority, uh, to take that responsibility. Same question with reconstruction. You know that, you know, that is one of the areas people are hoping the Saudi Arabia will play a large role because you your immense wealth. Uh, is Saudi Arabia willing to uh, finance the reconstruction of Gaza? I mean, there's no point in talking about the reconstruction of Gaza if we're not going to talk about first ending the kill. Again, as long as we're able to find a pathway to a, a, a solution, a resolution, a pathway that means that we're not going to be here again in a year or two, then we can talk about anything. But if we are just uh, resetting to the status quo before October 7th in, in a way that sets us up for uh, uh, another round of this, as we have seen in the past, we're not interested in that conversation. So let's talk about that, that political path. Um, is what you are saying that you would, you would be willing to be part of the solution with the, uh, regarding the Palestinians? And I think you've said in the past publicly that you would be willing to continue to move toward uh, discussions with Israel about normalization. If and only if there was, as you put it, a irreversible path mm -hmm. to Palestinian statehood. In other words, not just conversations, mm -hmm. talks, but a plan that to you seems irreversible. Absolutely. And I think, Farid, that's the consensus of all of everybody in the international community. When I talk to the Europeans, even when I, uh, you know, what I hear from the Americans, every, everybody agrees that uh, the only way to get out of this cycle of violence is to inevitably be on this path to a Palestinian state. And that's absolutely necessary. And that's what we're focused on. So you've seen the news reports, I'm sure, that Prime Minister Netanyahu told his coalition that the reason he was going to be able to stay in power is it's, it's something to the effect, I am the only person who will prevent the creation of a Palestinian state. How can that, how can that Prime Minister be your interlocutor if you're going to try and normalize relations with Israel? I mean, it's up to the Israeli people to decide who the Prime Minister is. I'm not going to get into that discussion. I will just say that in order for the region to see true peace, to see not, uh, true stability, and to see real integration that delivers economic uh, and social benefits for all of us, including Israel, is through peace, through a credible, irreversible process to a Palestinian state. We are fully ready, not just as Saudi Arabia, but as Arab countries, to engage in that conversation. I would hope that the Israelis would be as well, but it's up to them to make that decision. But are you saying uh, uh, unequivocally that if there is not a credible and irreversible path to a Palestinian state, there will not be normalization of relations between Saudi Arabia and Israel. And that's the only way we're going to get a benefit. So yes, because we need stability and only stability will come through resolving the Palestinian issue. That is a very frank and, uh, and, and uh, uh, direct answer to a question for a diplomat. And so I will.